Now, hot and fast has a lot of different meanings and sometimes it depends on who you're talking to. But for me, hot and fast means hotter and faster than I normally would cook something. And today we're gonna be cooking this boneless pork butt. Now this is about a six pound pork butt without the bone. And normally I do this at something like 250 to 275. Today I wanna to move that up a little bit. Now, if this had a bone in, I might go 325, 350. But because there's no bone in here, I'm gonna be going about 300. If it gets to 325, that's okay. But let's just say 300 to 325. And I'm gonna be doing it out on the Hunsaker Vortex Smoker. Now, also a lot of times you will see me do things the day before, get it seasoned, put it in the refrigerator overnight, and then do it the next day. I'm doing this all the same day. I've got to actually use this pork butt because I need the space in my storage refrigerator and freezer. So it's getting done today. And the end result is going to be something really good. It's something that I had at a diner in Colorado 40 years ago on a backpacking trip. They made something called a Rocky Mountain pork pile, which was delicious. It was like it's on a big piece of like Texas toast in Colorado, piled with pulled pork and sauce and some slaw. So I'm going to try and recreate that. It's going to be really good. So let's get this seasoned up. What I'm using today is a competition style rub from Wishing Well Barbecue. And I have my little protective wrap on the shaker here so it doesn't get dirty as I'm moving this pork butt around. Plenty of moisture on the surface here. We're just going to season this up everywhere. I'm not going to do any trimming. It's already been sort of massacred at the deboning stage. So we're just going to get seasoning everywhere we can here. Inside, outside, edges, fat side, not fat side. And we'll consider this the fat side, even though there's been a lot taken off here. All right, I am happy with that. Let's go fire up the Hunsaker Vortex drum smoker and get this on. So the Hunsaker Vortex Smoker is up to temp. Like I said, 300 to 325 today for this hotter and faster cook. I'm burning hickory in there. And as you saw, I added water in there. Want to keep some moisture in this chamber with the higher heat. So let's get our pork butt on, get a probe in, let it go. Now, a lot of times I won't add a temperature probe for internal temp if I'm just doing a large cut of meat like this I'll wait you know a few hours and look and see what the color what the bark is looking like but because I'm doing this hotter and faster today I do want to see that temp if we hit 160 ish and we've got good color that's when I'm going to wrap it so we'll come back in two hours see what our temp is and if we need to we'll spritz if we get to that temp in two hours we'll wrap playing this by ear today All right, we've been going two hours. Our internal temperature is right around 106 degrees. The temperature of the Hunsaker has been holding really nice in that 300 to 325 range. So let's go ahead and check our pork butt. That's looking good. Do you think I want to give this a spritz with just some plain water? Just that surface here on the top. We got good color developing. I'm gonna get this closed up and let this keep going until it gets in that 150 to 160 range and then I'll take a look at it and it'll probably be ready to wrap at that point. All right, we are at the three hour and 20 minute mark. We've just hit 154 internal and the rise has slowed. So I wanna take a look at this, check the color. If it's looking good, we're gonna wrap it. And wrapping it today is gonna to be going in a foil pan covered with two layers of foil and it's gonna go in the oven inside at 300 degrees because Heat is heat at this point, it's not gonna get any more smoke. Oh, I'm liking that. So I'm gonna get the temperature probe out and I'm gonna try and get it back into a similar place through the foil once it's wrapped. I wanna get a little bit of our spritzing liquid or water in here, maybe half a cup. Let's get our pork butt. And I wanna remember this is the side where the probe was in, so I'm gonna try and get it right back in here. Oh, 
All right, I'm gonna get this into the oven, get the probe in, and when we get to, let's say, 203 degrees, we will check it for tenderness. All right, it is exactly six hours and 10 minutes that this has been cooking, both out on the smoker and then finishing up in the oven wrapped. So what I wanna do now after it hit that 203 degree temperature, and that 203 is really just a guide. It could have been tender five degrees ago. It might not be tender now, but I did remove the temperature probe that I had going through the foil because if it needs more time, I'm just gonna put it in there for 20 minute increments at the same 300 degree temperature. So we can just give it a little more time if we need to, but let's peel back the foil and check. If it is tender, we're gonna cover it back up. I'll put another layer of foil on here and it'll rest for an hour. But let's see how we did. Oh, looking good. And really now it is just probe time. We're just gonna see how tender it is with the probe going in and out. Yeah, that's tender. That is butter. And you can see right there, that's showing 206. Different spots are gonna have different temperatures. Look at that, that's 210. So foil's going back on. In fact, I'm gonna use fresh foil and it's just gonna sit over on the stove top, no heat, just relaxing for an hour. And then after that, we'll shred it and build this pork pile. I'll see you back here in an hour and it's time to pull this. All right, I have transferred the pork butt into my, I just call this my pulling pan. I use this for pulling chuck rose, pork butt, and brisket for doing that. And this has been resting for an hour in that foil. So let's just go ahead and pull this and get some good pulled pork. Oh, there we go. That, nice and hot still. I'm glad I have insulators on my gloves. And it is still hot, even with those. But nice and tender, nice and moist. I do have those bear claw things that you can use to pull pork, but I just like using, you know, my hands with the gloves because then I can pull a little piece like this out and take a little cheater taste. Let's see. Even without any sauce, that's good pulled pork. Now I do have all the juice that remained in those foil pans. If I needed to add some here to bring some moisture back to this, I could, but I really don't need to. There's a lot of moisture in the meat with that fat. So we're doing good. All right, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna set this aside in a few minutes. We're gonna take some of this, mix it with sauce to build our pork pile. But first we gotta get our bread ready. That's the base of this. All right, right here, I've got a nice big thick piece of sourdough bread that I just cut. And I'm going to toast this just in a pan on the stove. But first, I want to get a nice little coating of flavor on here. It's going to be butter, but it's going to be butter mixed with horseradish. Just want to get a good coating on both sides here. So we can toast this up right. So this was maybe half a stick of butter with a tablespoon or two of horseradish. And I'll just use the rest for something else just to butter some toast. Just like that. Now I'm gonna toast this up. So I pulled out some of the pulled pork into a bowl here so we can mix just this amount with our barbecue sauce. And what I'm using today is the Rib Rack Barbecue Sauce Bourbon Flavor. Let me get some on here. Get in here and mix it all up. We will definitely add some more on our pulled pork pile. Just wanna get enough in here to get that flavor distributed. All right, let's go ahead and build this thing. All right, I have my nice toasted piece of sourdough here and I'm trying to replicate this dish. And there was some mustard on it, so I'm gonna put some brown mustard, some spicy brown mustard on the base. Just wanna spread that around a bit. Not a whole lot here, just a little hint of that mustardy tang. Next up is a slaw that was on it, and this is a carrot slaw. And all this is is some shredded carrots of different colors. You could use just regular carrots. Has a little bit of apple cider vinegar, a little bit of agave, some salt and pepper. Really, it's just to taste. We're going to get this on our base here. Some nice crunch there. Now, some of our pork. And when I mean some, 
I mean a lot, because this is a pile, remember. This is meant to be eaten with a knife and a fork. This is not a sandwich or a piece of avocado toast that you pick up and daintily eat. You really do need a knife and fork here unless you're really wanting to get messy. Eh, maybe you do. Next up, some more of our barbecue sauce because why not? And it had a lawn on it, let me tell you. And to finish it off, some nice fresh dill pickle slices on the top. And there we have it, the pulled pork pile on that nicely toasted piece of sourdough. I'm gonna get my knife and fork out and we're gonna have a taste. All right, so I am gonna start right down here at the end and it's gonna fall apart and it's gonna be messy and it's gonna be delicious. And I'm gonna remember exactly what it tasted like when I had this 40 years ago because this looks really close. And I have to get some extra pork on this piece right here. It is not an elegant thing to eat, but it is gonna be tasty. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's it. This bite now, I got some pickle in there with everything. I gotta tell you, I love these little walks down memory lane when you shoot for something that you had a long time ago and you get pretty darn close. This may not be exact, but it's really bringing back the memories. This is also a fun way to use pulled pork in something different than a sandwich or just, you know, maybe put on rice or something like that. And above all else, it's delicious.